All right, so this is the other part of the article that we started the other day called, um, what's it, the machine, uh, oh, merging mind and machine. So, teaming up with technology. In 2005, surgeons drilled a hole in Hutchinson's skull. Then they inserted an, it, a sensor into her motor cortex. Wires connected the sensor to a receiver in her head. After her surgery had healed, researchers plugged Hutchinson's receiver into a cable that relayed signals from her brain to computers. This just sounds crazy. I mean, if you were telling people from like the 1930s that we were going to do this, they would probably think that we would like be horrible robot like type people. I mean, it's crazy. They connected a robotic arm to the computers. The computers could interpret Hutchinson's brain signals to move the arm. Soon, Hutchinson's, the computer, and the robotic arm became a team. Hutchinson was even able to lift her hand and drink from a cup. Kathy's smile when she put down that drink, that's everything, Donnie Hughes says. Oh, I bet. And that was the teaming up with technology subheading. So, building on success. That's really crazy to think that they were able to do that. Oh my gosh, watch the videos on the um, links for the extensions for this reading. There are so many really cool uh, experiments that they were showing how to do. Today, other scientists are building on that success. One of those scientists, Dr. Miguel Nicolas, in 2014, a paralyzed former athlete kicked the first ball of the World Cup games wearing one of Nikolai's full-body exoskeletons. The exoskeleton was connected to a brain signal sensor in the man's cap. By thinking about kicking, he sent the signal to a computer on his back. The computer then translated the signals into the exoskeleton-aided kick. Such feats became common as scientists kept merging mind and machine. Wow. I mean, it's actually kind of crazy to think that they would use that to help somebody. I mean, you know, with sports, but I guess it's, it's just one way to show. This is kind of hard to see on here. So I'm going to see if I shut off the light. Yeah, there you go. People with spinal cord paralysis no more. People with spinal cord injuries can't move because the brain and the body no longer communicate. Scientists hope to restore motion with a skeleton controlled by the wearer's thoughts. It is a big challenge. Hundreds of sensors must be implanted in the brain. The sensors will send signals to the exoskeleton. Signals must also travel in reverse. Touch sensors will tell the brain where the body is in space. Wow. I just... <sighs> hmm. You think about having all those wires connected to your brain. I'm just... Do you face a risk of, like, dying? Like, what about infection? What about... If the wires go bad, well, I mean, the surgeries, your brain is like a big thing to be touching. I wonder how many people have died just trying to do the little surgeries. I can't read this part up here, so obviously I don't expect you to either. I think they're just talking about, it says, electrodes send signals to a computer in a helmet, and the computer changes the signals to the command. Uh-huh. Commands travel wirelessly to a backpack computer. Oh, so it goes into there. Tiny motors on the exoskeleton pick up the computer's commands to move limbs. Touch sensors provide feedback from the environment. I just putting infection down here. I I just feel like that you would be risking so much of that. Oh, that's it. 
Oh, I haven't checked off a lot of things. I've done my daily video. I got my four out of four problems right in math. I got for my daily journal entry, I did six plus. For my word art, I loved that. I also did another one called love. I got 10 out of 10 for that. Um, I have my reading video. I did my read to self. I got six done, seven A. I got 10 questions, two points for every question, 14 points for my test or review and now I need seven facts or questions for my science so I have my science journal I put the 16th but it was supposed to be the 17th so I'm gonna change that date Choop. Week one, day four, nine, eighteen, twenty. And this was the merging mind and the machine. Okay, number one. Can't. People get infections. There's wires. I don't know. Just wondering. Number two, how dangerous are all these brain surgeries? Do people want to move so badly they are willing to die? doctor said a lady's smile oops it's not a letter and we're talking about Hutchison is why he does the work. I mean, I guess the fact that she never moved and couldn't do anything after her um, accident to being able to move again, I mean, that would be huge. But... article was from oops from 20 was it 2004 with the lady in the 2005 how much better is this stuff now Number six. I'm going to 
to ask this again because I ask it every time. How much does it cost? They never say. I'm assuming if they never say it's because it's really expensive. But it's really expensive, then how could they be able to afford it? And is moving or does moving, not is moving, does moving make life or the quality of life that much better? I guess we don't even like being, like the COVID thing, not being able to travel. I mean, I can still move around in my house and feed myself and do that stuff. So I guess it, it's huge. This one was more questions because... It didn't really share a lot, except for it did make me wonder about all of these other things. So, use these as examples if you need to. Or copy this if you need to, if you're struggling with ideas. This was a hard article to read. Because you just feel like they just keep telling you all these things about how people are using it, but they don't really say, like, were the people ultimately happy or did they only just get to use it for the one time to get a drink of coffee? I mean, how much work does that take? All right. Have a good night.